So, incredibly sad news, guys. Um, we just gotten off the live stream and we're doing some finishing editing before we went to bed and just happened to go on Twitter just to check some messages and saw the news that Akira Toriyama has passed away. Um, yeah, excuse how I look. Yeah, like... <laughs> but we were like, we need to do something to talk about this right now. I mean, maybe one of the most influential figures of my childhood. Um, and so many people, like, I feel like every little boy goes through a Dragon Ball Z phase. Um, Dude, and you introduced me to anime with Dragon Ball Z. Yeah, it's it's your, your gateway mm -hmm. anime. Um, and not that it's like a starter. I mean, it's a finisher anime. <laughs> I'm sorry, guys. I don't, I'm not trying to joke. It just It's so freaking sad oh my gosh i know and he was work, still working on projects and everything else and like it's just a shock i mean just one of the most loved figures in this industry and uh it's not an exaggeration to say this is like when stan lee died or you know god forbid you know when one day george lucas passes away i mean just an absolute titan who yeah. introduced so many people to this like special art form that I feel especially for like like us has like it's like a hallmark of our culture like dude none of that I feel like Vegeta and Goku are like idols like you can wear a shirt of them anywhere and people know who they are and everybody knows yeah everybody knows Dragon Ball everybody knows who Akira Toriyama is even if they don't know the name it's almost impossible to it's just, I mean, it's like not knowing Star Wars. It's, yeah. And, uh, I mean, it was my first, it was not just my first anime, it was my first comic. Like, I remember, like, Peter and I were little kids, we were still into, you know, Pokemon. It was that first transition into that more adult-style cartoon anime, you know, just shifting from, like, that, um... I remember you telling me you stopped um, going to karate because it ruined <laughs> Dragon yeah. Ball for you. I like was a little kid and I like wanted to go to karate because I love Dragon Ball so much. And then I stopped going to karate because I thought it would hurt my enjoyment of Dragon Ball <laughs> because it wasn't like uh, Dragon Ball Z, um, which is ridiculous. I, I'm ridiculous. But that's how much as a little kid, this stuff, like I just loved it so much. I still love it. I'll always I'll say, love it. No, as adults, I we, we yeah. still watch Dragon Ball. Mm -hmm. And it's one of those things that uh, I remember being a little kid and on Sunday morning cartoons catching the last couple seconds of a Dragon Ball Z episode. It was, you know, Saiyan Saga, you know, Goku fighting Vegeta, uh, Vegeta the, you know, he's just turned into a giant ape and I had no idea what it was. <laughs> mm -hmm. And I was like, what is that? Like, we had, like, dial-up internet. I had no clue. And I just obsessed about it all week. And I got up early. Because you couldn't tell. Like, I didn't I didn't know how to read the TV magazine. And eventually, like, found out that it was Dragon Ball Z. And, you know. Jeez, TV magazine. <laughs> yeah, it just it immediately grabbed hold of me. And just nothing was ever the same. Because when I was a little kid, it was Star Wars and Dragon Ball Z. Just everything. Um, it's definitely one of those things that you can look back like, where were you when you first were introduced to Dragon Ball Z? I think for you, it was a Sunday morning chasing that feeling of like seeing like just the ending of a fight. And I was, remember yeah. mine was you'd be like, Peter, there's this cool show I just saw <laughs> waking my ass up at like fucking butt crack morning of Sunday, but like, come watch the show, we have to watch it. And immediately just knowing that this is going to change our lives forever to the point where we are practicing in our backyard every night yeah. just fighting like are you saying um, oh my gosh we're we so would, uh, fucking lame we, I used would, to... we, we were convinced <laughs> if we tried hard enough we would be able to do like high blast like you convince yourself as a kid because it like the feels... command, command way. <laughs> when i was a little kid we would uh have to go take out the compost for our parents and we didn't want to miss tsunami when they'd be playing dragon ball z mm -hmm. 
and I'd even do like the Goku run from when he'd be running down with the the yeah the knee behind the knees on your toes. Oh my gosh! Um, and it's just like it's like a it's a series that I keep coming back to, like, and I keep alternating. You know, at different points in my life, I go back and watch Dragon Ball or Dragon Ball Z, Dragon Ball GT, and then you know what's been going on with Super and all these things. She's really sad. Yeah. You like think about Dragon Ball and how influential it was to pretty much every kid during that time, especially how like influential it is now. Like, because I... you still have like children <laughs> being introduced to it now. Still, mm-hmm. like it is timeless. I don't think we're gonna have like something that develops or changes so many people's lives for a long time. It's like. It, in the, I feel like in the anime space, this was Star Wars. This is like, and watching him die is like watching Luke Skywalker die. A person that is almost mythical, you're like, this person's not real. He's, he's created something that you're like, this came from someone's head. You're like, that's not possible. But then he makes it, you're like, this is truly special. You can never recapture that. It's like lightning in the bottle. Once it's gone, it is gone. Well, he's just, he's, uh, he's just such a beloved figure in the industry, you know, if you're like anything like I was, you would just constantly be reading like Dragon Ball Theory and lore and power scaling stuff. And you'll know that Akira Toriyama is notorious or charmingly forgetful. Um, so much of the lore is stuff that he just forgot. <laughs> like, why Saiyans don't have tails later on? Yeah, like, he just, on, like, he pretty much just on. forgot. Yeah. Oh and, God. like, later on, they, like, did the whole thing with, like, the S cell. But it was, he pretty much made it, like, yeah, I forgot, you know? Mm-hmm. The guy forgot more important things than most people will ever create. That's just, you know. Well, one of my favorite ones was, like, the reason why the Super Saiyans had, like, white hair. It was, like, honestly, it was cheaper to do that in the drawings instead of filling it in. Because when you're doing these kind of drawings, no, you're like, you know what, we'll save a little bit of money. And yeah. he made a decision that influenced the entire people, like, entire, like, show. People were like, oh, what a bold choice in design. He's like, yeah, no, 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 it's supposed to save purely industry. money. That's yeah. Funny. I love, like, learning his little factoids about him. Like, it was, like, him doing, having the same favorite pen he used the entire time. I'm like, that's fucking nuts like well i think dragon ball z hit like our generation just like like a brick because out of nowhere it was all we would talk about at school and this we would just spend all day sneakingly like tracing uh we'd get like these little uh sticker packs that we wouldn't open we would just trace them trying to draw every i mean every kid wanted to work in anime or manga like that was the thing like Every kid with, like, the dream. And it was just, like, it began this, like, this, uh, like, obsession with manga. And, like, this whole thing that just seems so different than the cartoons that came on. Mm-hmm. Because it was from Japan. And it was just, it was exciting. The games that used to come out that you'd have to Budokai. go get. Well, you'd have to go get the bootleg ones or the uh, mm-hmm. the broken The ones that you could play because they're in Japanese and stuff. And you couldn't even play them without, like breaking or whatever you were. Yeah, I remember your friend Spencer having yeah. the, like, I can't remember Because he had the PS one from, uh... Japan. Yeah. And he actually had one that could play the games and we're like, this is the coolest thing ever. And you couldn't just get the toys and stuff. It was like, this is like, you know, you had to go to, like, comic book stores. Like, mm-hmm. because I remember when we were just, you know, first learning about it, obviously we were into Pokemon. Everybody was into Pokemon. And we were actually at a comic store that our mom had like helped us hunt down Pokemon cards. And I look over, and they had like a Dragon Ball Z, like toys, like the action figures, and manga. I was just like, like what the fuck? And like it saved up my allowance, and I was like, I'm getting that. And I ended up getting a Goku toy and a Vegeta toy, and a comic. Like, and I still have it. it just I didn't like I've like read it. Even as like a little kid, I must have been seven, reading it so carefully. I was so afraid to damage yeah, it because yeah, the paper so thin, and I never threw away the sleeve. And it was the Saiyan saga. It, it mm-hmm. was exactly what we were watching on TV. Mm-hmm. And you have to, you just have to watch. You just have to watch on Toonami when the new sagas would come out. They'd start the whole thing over. Mm-hmm. So you'd watch like three cycles of 
the Saiyan saga waiting for the second half of like the Namek saga. Mm -hmm. So I mean, I, I don't even know how many times I've watched Dragon Ball Z and Dragon Ball all the way through. Not even, that's just to get through it. Like, let alone going back and watching it just out of the love of it. Um, I remember my favorite part of watching you buy those toys when you were kids was, during that time I was huge in the Gundam, but you're buying these Dragon Ball Z toys that the mobility on them was very, nothing, dude. it was shoulders, just rotation, this. just nothing. And just, no, no knee bends either. No, just their arms just did yeah, this. But, and I always look, I look back at them and like, those weren't even like meant to be for toys. Those were like, like yeah. statues. They were meant to be like, you're keep, supposed to like keep them, them in the, but... also keep those in the fucking box. Yeah. But like, the kids were like, you can't help yourself. Once you, you see that toy, you smell that fresh plastic, it's like a frenzy kicks over you. And I think it was like the first cultural wave that I had to fight for. Um, because it was the first thing that our parents just didn't fucking understand. Mm -hmm. Like they understood Star Wars because they grew up with Star Wars. So like, yeah, of course, Andy likes Star Wars. But they're like, this Dragon Ball stuff, like, what the, what the fuck? And I used to, like, be talk my mom's ear off for hours, just rehashing line by line what happened in Dragon Ball. Like, just like a, like a kid on meth. It must have been so obnoxious. But, again, and I can't think of another show that was more formative as, a, like, as a child than that. But, yeah, I don't know. Um, incredibly sad, you know. Definitely a tragedy. Um, just wanted to comment it's like one of those moments that you want to just take the time, no matter how tired you are, just to say thank you, Akira Toriyama. Yeah. yeah. For changing our lives. And defining who we are as adults now. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. Thanks, guys. Let us know, you know, if there's any special Dragon Ball Z moments or of his other work that you have. Um, yeah. And we'll catch and you in the comments. Yeah. Bye. <laughs>